Hi, I'm Nicole Nichols, and this is City Critters. They live in the shadows, the alleyways, empty lots, and condemned buildings of almost every neighborhood. Their lives are generally harsh and short. They struggle to find enough food and water in an environment that is full of the constant threat of cruelty, disease, starvation, and predation. You've seen these cats, the cats that skulk around late at night, Cats that show up in your backyard begging for food, but run away when you approach. Homeless cats, stray cats, wild cats. They're called many things, but what they really are is feral. What is a feral cat? Honestly, it's not all that different from pet Fluffy at home. Usually what happens is Fluffy, a pet unaltered cat, is lost, is abandoned, or somehow finds her way scratching out an existence in the environment. Well, Fluffy does what all unaltered cats do. She has kittens. These kittens grow up outside with no human contact. These are the feral cats. In essence, they're no different from a raccoon or a possum in that they are afraid of humans. While some feral cats might tolerate a little bit of human contact, most are too fearful or wild to be handled. Unchecked, feral cats will continue to reproduce hundreds, even thousands of feral cats a year. It's estimated that over 40 million feral cats exist in the United States, and even closer to home, over 26,000 feral cats in Washoe County. Sadly, a lot of communities still insist on using outdated methods of feral cat population control, such as lethal elimination and removal. Not only are these methods horribly cruel, but they also are very ineffective. When we come back, we're going to talk about a humane and effective method of feral cat population control. It's called trap, neuter, return, or TNR for short. Stay with us. I hope you find a home. I hope you find a home. Hey, maybe you'll be picnic. Maybe you'll be picnic. We've been caged together too long. We've been caged together too long. How come nobody ever picks me? Maybe they're looking for somebody different. Pick me. Well, the shelter's closing up for another day. We didn't get picked. I know. Tomorrow. Unfortunately, not everyone is excited about having a feral cat in their neighborhood. Many community members see them as a nuisance, citing yowling, fighting, spraying, and reproducing as reasons why they should be removed. While these are very valid complaints, we believe that there is a better way of managing feral cats and the behaviors that people find so disturbing. Basically, there's two methods of managing feral cats. The first is to remove the cats from the environment. In this situation, uh, someone will trap the cats, remove them, and take them to an animal shelter. Since feral cats aren't really very snuggly, they're deemed unadoptable and therefore euthanized almost immediately upon entering the shelter. Bad for cats. Unfortunately, this method also doesn't really help the humans either. See, feral cats live in an environment for two reasons. It provides food and shelter. So if you go in and remove the feral cat from that environment, the only thing that's going to happen is that more feral cats are going to move in. And that is bad for people. The method that we advocate and use at Nevada Humane Society is trap, neuter, return, or TNR for short. The way that this works is that a volunteer will go out and set a humane trap. 
cat, once the cat is trapped, it is brought to a veterinarian who will spay or neuter it, vaccinate it, give it a long-lasting antibiotic shot. Once the cat has recovered, then it is taken back to the place that it was trapped. That is its home environment. And this allows the cat to live out the rest of its life happier, healthier, and no longer exhibiting a lot of the disturbing behaviors that people don't like, such as the yowling, the fighting, the spraying, and especially the reproducing. I don't know about you, but it sounds like a win-win situation to me. People and outside cats have lived side by side for 10,000 years. This is not a new phenomenon, but we believe with TNR, it's an issue that can be managed for the good of everyone involved, cats and people. When we come back, we'll speak with Beata Liebertruth. She's the manager of the Animal Help Desk at Nevada Humane Society. And she's going to share with us some more information about TNR and how you can get involved for your neighborhood and the cats in your area. Stay with us. Abandoned and lost. From the dark, cold streets of the city to a cage in the local shelter to heaven, your lap. Welcome back. With us is Beata Liebertruth. She is the manager of the Animal Help Desk at Nevada Humane Society. Thanks for being with us, Beata. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your work with Animal Help Desk. The Animal Help Desk is a free program we established for as a service for the uh, residents here in Washoe County and we provide free information on low-cost spay-neuter services, vaccinations, behavior issues, if somebody has problem with their cat not using the litter box or um, the, the main, the most important thing we're trying to do is help people um, who may think that they have to surrender an animal to the shelter and explore other options because the shelter should always be the very, very last resort for any animal, obviously, because we are so full at any time. And so it's always worth exploring other options first as far as sure. finding a new home for their pet if they cannot keep it. Yeah. So that's the main uh, focus of the Animal Help Desk, and this is a free service. Great. And they keep us busy. We I, receive I on uh, a busy day about 100 phone calls every day. Wow. So. So do you receive a lot of phone calls about feral cats? We do. Um, that's actually a big uh, portion also of what we do with the Animal Help Desk. Um, we very aggressively promote TNR, which is Trap, Neuter, Return, which is, again, a free program that we provide for residents here in Washoe County. Mm -hmm. And um, we promote that, yes. That's great. So if someone were calling you wanting advice about feral cat situation, you talk to them about TNR, uh, uh, what Absolutely, would you say? absolutely. First of all, we need to determine if it's truly a feral cat. A lot of times if people may call and say there's a cat that showed up in my yard and you know we have to find out is it a stray cat an abandoned pet cat or if mm -hmm. it is it's truly a, a feral cat and feral cats are basic there's nobody knows for sure how many feral cats are out there but it's estimated almost 25,000 cats feral cats in Washoe County alone yeah so this is a pro you know a problem that we're facing and the only real uh, solution to uh, keep that population under control is a TNR program a trap neuter release program where we get these cats spayed neutered vaccinated we make sure they're healthy and then they get returned back outside because unfortunately most of these cats are just not tame enough to be adopted out as a pet as cat so what about if somebody says, you know, gosh, I've got these feral cats in my yard and, you know, I just want them to go away. I just want to get rid of them. Um, I imagine you get calls like that. We do. Um, what do you say to those people? Well, usually it's, it starts out with a mama cat that had kittens and then the kittens grow up and unfortunately if they don't get socialized as a, at a very young age mm -hmm. they grow up unsocialized and remain feral and then if you consider that one female cat can have three litters of kittens a year 
So one female cat can produce up to 20 cats a year. Wow. That gives you an idea about the scope of the feral cat population out there. And the only true answer is to get these cats spayed and neutered so we break that cycle of... No longer reproducing. Exactly. Yeah. And I think your question was also about some of the nuisance behavior that might be associated with right. having feral cats right. in your neighborhood because an unaltered tomcat obviously will be territorial, there's spraying involved and possibly fighting with right. other cats. And all that usually, you know, ceases to uh, exist once you get them spayed and neutered. And if you have a, an established little colony of feral cats, they also won't allow any other cats to move in. So it's an all around good idea to do that. And again, it's a free service that is provided. We are very lucky here in Washoe County. We have a group called Community Cats that has been providing uh, free clinics for, sp for feral cats for the last eight years. Wow, that's and great. they already have spayed and neutered up to 12,000 cats. So 12, this has 000. been a huge success. That's, yes. and that's a lot of kittens then that yes, weren't born. a lot of cats that have been prevented from being born. So. Yeah. We actually have two uh, large rental properties, mm -hmm. like apartment complexes, where we have successfully worked with the management. They had large colonies of feral cats. We got them all spayed and neutered. We established certain feeding stations, so they are totally out of you know, the way of high traffic areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has been a huge success, and it's, it's really a model for others to, to follow. And, uh, so you've got then these spayed, neutered, feral cats that are not exhibiting this disturbing behavior, living side by side with an uh, apartment complex full of people. Right. Sounds like it's a, it's a way to make them all work together. Absolutely. And if you have a large apartment complex like that, you will always have kind people who are feeding these cats. Right. So you don't have, even if somebody decided, we do not want any of these cats here, you don't have control over what people do. There'll always be people feeding feral cats. Right. And wherever there is a food source, you will have a feral cat. So really the only real answer is to get these cats spayed and neutered and if there is a kind caretaker that's willing to continue to feed them they won't go through garbage they won't be a nuisance at all right okay now you've talked several times um, that the feral cats are not really considered adoptable but is there ever a time where uh, TNR really isn't the best option where the cat actually has to be removed from the from the location and in that case what happens? Obviously there are certain situations we always try to exhaust other options first but there are certain situations where it might be uh, impossible to return the cat where she actually was trapped before because it is a high traffic area or because perhaps it's a vacant property nobody's there to continue to take care of these cats the only other really uh, option for a cat like that would be to be placed as a barn cat okay. and we actually established a very successful barn cat program here at Humane, uh, Nevada Humane Society where we try to pull the cats from the pound that are basically doomed to be put down. Right. We get them spayed and neutered and vaccinated, make sure they're healthy, and then we do try to find a good placement for them as a barn cat, an outside cat, where they can live out their lives as mousers. They'll be working cats, actually. And this has been very, very successful. So, there so that would be an option for somebody who really does not want the cat in their yard or, you know, put up some flyers maybe at feed stores or, you know, mm -hmm. talk to people that may have some acreage and that right. might be willing to have an outside cat as a mouser, as long as they provide shelter and, and food for these cats. And that's another option. Great. So it sounds like TNR really is an effective method. It's the way to go. It's the only effective method because in the past, for the last decades, people, you know, counties have used other programs such as kill and remove and it's just not working because, again, there's in some areas there's thousands of feral cats out there and as soon as you just remove a whole colony of cats from a certain area it creates what we call a vacuum effect mm -hmm. and it'll only take a few weeks and you have new cats move in as long as there is a food source like a garbage bin or something there and so TNR is the only effective way to deal with the feral cat population.
Great. Well, thank you, Beata, for being with us today You're and welcome. sharing us your expertise. You're welcome. And I hope anybody who's out there who has seen a feral cat or a stray cat, again, one cat, one female cat, can produce up to 20 cats a year. So even if you are able to just help us maybe trap one cat and get her altered, it would be a wonderful thing. So call us if you know Great. we can be of help. Thank you. Stay with us. Next up, Nevada Humane Society News. Life's funny. I never thought I'd end up at a shelter. But then again, neither did you. Life's funny. Welcome back, and now it's time for Nevada Humane Society news. As you might remember from previous episodes, June was National Adopt-a-Shelter Cat Month. To celebrate, Nevada Humane Society waived the adoption fee for all adult cats and set a goal of finding homes for 600 cats. Did we make it? Almost. 586 adult cats found new homes. Thank you to everyone who had brought a new furry friend into their home during National Adopt-a-Shelter Cat Month. Move over Kate Moss. Nevada Humane Society dogs have the stage. At least, that was the case at the Shine event, a fundraiser hosted by the Grand Sierra Resort last month. The theme was white dress, cuisine, cocktails, and fashion. The evening included a fashion show which featured Nevada Humane Society dogs strutting their stuff and helping the models show off their latest fashion. Way to go, guys. Recently, Nevada Humane Society was the beneficiary of a Poker Run fundraising event hosted by the Vagos Motorcycle Club. The Poker Run event raised over $2,000 to help the homeless animals. Then, on Saturday, July 16th, members of the Vagos group delivered over four tons of pet food and kitty litter to the shelter. This group has such a heart for the animals, and next year they say the goal is to double the amount of food they deliver. Thank you for all your generous support. Finally, it's kitten season, and we have kittens coming out of our ears. We have energetic kittens, sleepy kittens, kittens of every size, shape, and color. All kittens are spayed, neutered, vaccinated, and microchipped. So come on down and adopt a kitten today. I'd like to introduce you to one of my favorite cats here at the shelter. This is Charm, and just like her name, she is very charming. If you take a look at her, she's also very beautiful. She's got the most beautiful blue eyes and these really great markings. Really love to find her a home. She's about 10 years old, and I have to tell you, she is truly one of the most loving cats I have ever known, and, and I've known a lot of cats in my life. She really deserves to have someone uh, that will allow her to sleep on their bed and curl up on their curl up in their lap. Um, so come on down, meet Charm, and hopefully take her home uh, for as a new addition to your family. And that's all for this edition of Nevada Humane Society News. <laughs>